Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a plus one jump every second game. Now, we have done a video on this before, however, there was a couple of problems which meant that the jump power couldn't go over a limit of a thousand. This is the default Roblox limit, so we couldn't actually jump any higher. Now, I'm going to show you how to fix that today. We're going to be able to jump a lot higher. There will still be a limit, there's nothing we can do about that. No matter what you do, there will always be a limit, but the limit is going to be so much incredibly higher you are not going to need to go more. Effectively, what we're going to do is be using jump height, where well, it doesn't really stop. However, jump height pretty much relies on jump power. So when the jump height gets to a value of around 6,500, uh, that's equivalent to about a jump power of 1,000, and you don't actually jump any higher from that point onwards, although your jump height still increases. So the way we're going to get around this is we're going to, once we've got 6,500, uh, jump height we're going to then start manipulating the player's local gravity so that they um, jump even higher they go higher because there's less gravity now I'll explain this a bit more when we get there later in the video but we're not going to want too much um, well, no too little gravity sorry I would say the very least gravity you want is maybe 10 at least because if you have a gravity of 0 0.1 for example uh, sure, you jump incredibly high, but you jump very slowly. It's a very slow ascent and descent. That's basically what we're going to have with the gravity. So we, and you will see that as you get uh, lower and lower. So we will be putting a limit on it. You can decide the limit. Of course, the higher the limit, the the lower the players will be able to jump, but the smoother it will look. Anyway, there's nothing we can do about that. So let's just get straight on. So to get started, we're going to go to view and uh, properties and explorer we're going to close the properties tab and we'll not close it but just collapse it a bit make um, this screen a bit more visible we're also going to go under view output this is where we're going to see all our error messages in case we have any and you will see i've got a little base plate here which is this yellow thing which i've made and this tower which i've made as well now this tower is um it's just a bunch of parts put together which uh, we're going to have a wind pad on the top. So make sure you have a little tower for the players to jump up. For example, we jump onto here, 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 here. And you know, we just go all the way up the tower as we get more and more jump power. So to get started, we need to go under server script service and add in a script. We're going to call this script um, leader stats, as this is where we're going to create all the stats we are going to need. So when we're creating leader stats, we've covered this in many videos before, we need to call a function when a player joins the game. This function is added colon connect function and we're passing in the player. Next we say local leader stats equals instance.new folder with a comma player. Next we'll say leader stats.name equals leader stats. Now if you want a bit more in-depth detail about leader stats, we have a video on it which you can find top right of your screen. Next we're going to drop down and create a local jump. Now we're going to call it jump power, we could call it jump height, it doesn't matter. Uh, in fact, let's call it jump height. Actually we are going to use jump power because otherwise we might get confused later on. So we'll say local jump power equals instance.new number value, comma leader stats, and then jump power dot name is going to be equal to jump space height. So this will just, I know it's like meant to be jump power, but we're going to use jump height. This will basically display a little leaderboard with each player's jump height. Next, we're going to set the default jump power dot value to be, I'm going to set it to 15 by default. Now, make sure you go to home, game settings, world. What we're going to be using jump height, so tick jump height, and just leave it at whatever the default is. And that won't really matter anyway. So we're going to be using a default jump height of 15. You may want to have it lower, maybe um, maybe seven, I think is the very default. Let's put it to five for default, actually. Next we'll say local wins, because we are going to need a wins variable, equals instance.new uh, int value. And this will be inside of the leader stats. Now, wins.name will of course be wins, and wins.value will be by default zero. Next, we've got one more variable to make, which will be local gravity, which will be set to a new instance, so instance.new, uh, and this will be a number value, and this will be inside of the player. 
Now what these instance.news do, it creates a brand new instance or whatever this is here inside of the player or the leader stats or whatever you've got and after this comma. Next we'll say gravity.name, uh, we're going to set to gravity and gravity.value. By default, the default gravity is 196.2. If your game's gravity is different by default, you can go to game settings, uh, world again, and your default gravity will be in here. As I say, 196.2 is mine. I think that's the default for all Roblox games. But we are now done in the leader stat script, so we can go and close that. Okay, now we're going to create a new remote event in replicated storage, uh, which we are going to rename to, we'll call it increase jump. And we're going to call this every single time we want to increase our jump height. So now under starter GUI, we can do this in um, starter player scripts, I think. But I'm just going to do it in starter GUI to be safe. We're going to rename this local script to jump handler. And in here, we're going to say local player equals game dot players dot local player. This will get the player or the, the, play, the local player. And I will say while wait one do what this will do is whatever code we have in here will be called every single second now this is where we're going to want to start increasing now first of all we're going to say workspace dot gravity equals player dot gravity dot value now what this is doing is setting the player's gravity but just for the player because um, if we want to change it for the server, we have to do this in a server script. Because we're doing it in a local script, it only happens for the player. So we're changing the gravity to the player's gravity value, but we're only changing the player's gravity, if that makes sense, and no one else's. Everyone has their own individual gravity. Okay, so what we want to do next is um, basically create a loop, which will, well, it's not really a loop, but an if statement that will stop calling code if the player's character hasn't loaded in. So to do this, we'll say if not player dot character, then continue end. Now this will stop any code um, below it not calling if the player's character hasn't loaded in. I believe. Next, we'll say uh, we, well we need to do an if statement to check that the jump um, power is greater than six thousand five hundred. Um, and if it is, we're going to decrease the gravity. Now before we do this, we're going to create a little variable local. Um, min gravity so this is the minimum gravity in the game i'm going to set to 10 you can have it as low as if you go zero of course you're going to go up forever you're never going to stop if you have 0 0.1 you're going to go up for a very long time and it'll be very slow this is what i mean when you go below a certain limit you're going to go very slow and ascend and descend very slowly so i'm going to put it at 10 you may need higher, you may want lower, I'm not sure. Anyway, we now need to say if player dot leader stats. Um, and what do we call it? Jump height. We call it jump uh, height dot value is greater than or equal to 6,500 because that's the point where jump height tends to sort of stop working. And workspace dot gravity is greater than or equal to 10. Or not 10, sorry, min gravity. Um, then we'll say workspace dot gravity minus equals 0 0.1 and after this if statement we'll say game dot replicate storage dot increase jump colon fire server and we're passing in the workspace dot gravity as well and you'll see why in a minute now we can go and close this script and we can create a new script inside a server script service which we will rename to um, jump increase now in this script we're going to start by saying game dot replicate storage dot increase jump dot on server event go and connect function and we're passing in the player and the gravity. Now this will be called when we fire the uh, event. And in here, first of all, we're going to set the player's jump height to um, their leader stat jump height. So player dot character dot humanoid dot jump height equals player dot leader stats. Um, jump height dot value and also player dot character dot humanoid dot jump height equal uh, plus equals one plus player dot leader stats dot wins dot value so what this is doing is um, we're setting our jump height to the value of the leader stats to make sure they're synced correctly and then we're going to increase it by one 
plus the number of wins we have. So for every win we have, we're going to get an extra jump height a second. Uh, we'll sort wins out when we make the win pad. And then we need to set the leader stats jump height and resync it with the humanoids jump height. So player dot leader stats uh, jump height. The reason we're doing jump height in these weird square brackets like this is because there's a space in between and you can't do dot jump height if there's a space in between it. Uh, dot value equals player dot character dot humanoid dot jump height. Next we'll say if player dot leader stats jump height dot value is greater than or equal to 6500 then player dot gravity dot value equals gravity so we're resyncing their gravity now this is basically the main stuff that we need to get done we next need to make the win script which we will go and do now so to do this i'm going to make a quick win pad up here it's just going to be a part which i'm going to stretch out this i'm not going to make it perfect just a little pad i'm going to scale it in i'm going to anchor it i will rename this to win pad and add a script inside. Now in this script we're going to start by saying uh, db equals false. So we're going to have a debounce which stops um, touching the pad once giving you multiple wins because that can happen. So by adding a debounce we prevent that. We're going to say script.parent.touched colon connect function hit. This is a basic touched event. We're not going to go too in depth of it. Next we'll say if hit if hit dot parent then uh, local player equals game dot players colon get player from character hit dot parent and if player then if then we need to say if debounce is false then we set debounce to true uh, player dot character dot now we're going to say humanoid root part dot c frame equals workspace dot spawn location dot c frame basically make sure in your workspace you have a spawn location where you want the players to be teleported back to um, when they touch the win pad and make sure it's called spawn location exactly now go into home game settings avatar and if you're using r15 you want to use uh, this humanoid root part if you're using r6 you want to use dots um, upper torso but we're using r15 so we're going to stick with humanoid root part next we'll say player dot character dot humanoid dot jump height equals 15 or 5 sorry back to our default 5 um, player dot leader stats so basically we're just resetting everything here uh, jump height equals 5 because that's our default in fact, under our leader stats, yeah, jump height's five, yeah, hundred percent. So set it up back to our default, and player dot leader stats dot wins dot value equals uh, plus equals one. Then we're going to wait three seconds. This gives the server enough time to then say debounce equals false without it giving multiple wins, and that's basically it. Now we need to create a data store, so we're going to add one more script. This will be our data store. And this will be one of our more complicated scripts. We'll say local ds equals game colon get service uh, data store service colon get data store data store name dash three. I'm not going to uh, dash one, sorry. This will be uh, the name of your data store. Just call this whatever. I'm not going to cover data stores too much in this video because we've done a load of videos on these, uh, which you can also find top right. Next we'll say game.players.player added colon connect function uh, player. Now as I say I'm not going to go too depth too deep into this data store, I'm just going to write it out because um, it'll be a waste of time to cover something we've already covered in the previous video. Next we'll say wait, just to give the server a bit of time to wait. Local player key equals uh, ID underscore dot dot player dot user ID. Local save value equals player dot leader stats uh, this will be jump height because that's the first value we want to save then local save value 2 will be the second value we want to save which will be player dot leader stats dot wins and then local save value 3 will be the third value we want to save which will be player dot gravity next we'll say local get saved equals uh, ds colon get async and in here we'll have the player key. Next we'll say if get saved then uh, save value dot value equals get saved one. Save value 
uh, two dot value equals get saved two and save value three dot value equals get saved three. Now we'll have an else here as well. So else uh, local numbers for saving equals a table containing save value dot value save value two dot value and save value three dot value and then next was a ds colon get a sync player key comma numbers for saving after this end we're going to drop down at another if statement if save value three dot value equals zero then so if our gravity value is saving is loading as zero that means it's not loaded properly because we want the default to be 196.2 so if, the, if it's loaded as zero it's not loaded properly so we need to set save value three dot value to 196.2 because that's our default now slightly different this time if save value just number one dot value is greater than zero then uh, we're going to repeat weight until player dot character so we're going to wait until the player's character is loaded then we're going to wait a further half a second and so player dot character dot humanoid dot jump height equals save value dot value so this basically means what this code does is uh, we wait until the player's character is loaded and then we'll set their jump height to their leader stats jump height and it just syncs it next we'll say game dot players dot player removing player removing colon connect function player and then here we'll say ds colon set a sync this time uh, id make sure you've got set a sync and not get a sync because lots of people um, get this bit wrong and that's why it doesn't work uh, player dot user id and then we want to pass in a table here of player dot leader stats um, jump height dot value player dot leader stats dot wins dot value and player dot gravity dot value now sorry if i didn't really explain this and just sort of wrote it and it was more of a copy uh, thing uh, that's just because i've already done a video on data stores before so i recommend you go watch that if you want more information on all of this we can also add a game colon bind to close uh, function for i comma v in pairs game dot players colon get players do or see v colon kick or if we say i comma player in pairs then we can say player colon kick and this will then go and kick each player individually um, which we'll call the player removing function if the server is to shut down something i forgot to mention for data stores to work you need to go to game settings um security and enable studio access to api services that is the only way you, you can get data stores to work and test them within roblox studio so make sure you have that enabled so that is basically it um if we were to now hit play we can test this and everything should be good let's see are we jumping very slowly a very very small amount but we are increasing it increases quite a lot actually so you might want to change the amount you're increasing by but we're not going to play around with that too much. If we open our player, we see our gravity value, that's 196.2. That means our gravity is 196.2. Now you see as we jump up here, we're getting one per second as well. So we just kind of got to wait until we've got enough to jump up, which we nearly do. Okay, we've got 82, 83, so we're nearly here. As soon as we get to the top, and when we touch the win pad, it should give us one win and our jump power will reset to five, then start incrementing by two each time. And if you have two wins, it'll increment by three. So here we go. This should reset to five. Uh, so we've got an error. So let's have a look. So jump height is not a valid member of folder leader stats. So what is the problem here? Let's go into our leader stats folder. Jump height, that is correct. It is a, it is a value of the leader stats. So what is up here? Player dot leader stats. Uh, jump height. Oh, because we need to say jump height dot value. That is why we need to say jump height dot value equals five. So let's um, test this again. This is why you have to have your output open and keep an eye out for errors because um, you will get them, especially when it comes to making games. You will need to do a lot of debugging, which I am going to do a video on in the future on how to debug your code. So as you see, we now jump up here. We touch this issue, go back to five, and we should get one win, which it does. And we're incrementing by two each time. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is um, set my jump height to 6,000 
500. And now you'll see, we get to a point where we're jumping very high. This would be the limit with jump power. But when we've started manipulating gravity, so we jump even higher. So you'll see we're jumping very high. This is how high we're jumping at the minute. So about here. Now you'll see if I cheat a bit and set my gravity to 10, which is... So uh, if I set it to 11, it will go down. Now it shouldn't go... you see we get to 10 and it stops going down. So now this is what 10 gravity looks like. The ascent is very slow. This is what I mean. That's why you don't want to go too low. But look how high we jump now. We will keep going for a long time because it's slow. This is what I mean. You don't want to go too low. But you'll see there's our minimum. That's what we were at last time. We're still going up. And you'll see we're jumping very high now. And we're still going up as well. We're not even starting to fall back down yet. Okay, now I think we are. But you see we jump very high. And this is basically our new limit. If you need to go higher than this, you can decrease the gravity even more. Um, but basically that's it. And now if we were to stop this and hit play again, our gravity should still be the same. Everything should have saved. So we got one win. Yep, jump height is correct. Let's have a look at our player's gravity. That is 10, which is correct. And we should jump at 10 gravity as well, which we do. And this will be individual for each player. So we can see that works. Now, if you're finding that the gravity um, is decreasing too quick, uh, you can go under the jump increase. No, not the jump increase, sorry. The local script, the jump handler. And change this from minus equals 0.1 to minus equals 0.01 or something. But I'm not going to encourage you to do that. But you can if you feel like gravity is decreasing too quick. So everyone, I hope you found that helpful. This is the best I can do, I'm afraid, as to making this um, the best possible version. It's the only thing I could think of on getting past that 1000 jump power limit. And while there is still a limit here, um, it's incredibly high. And I want to be completely honest, no tower you're making is going to need the limit. The limit here, I would probably say is, well, you, if you were to go down to 0 0.01 gravity, you're going to go hundreds of thousands of studs up, I would assume. I'm not doing all the maths right now, but you're going to go very, very high. And it'll be very slow, that's the only problem, but you'll go very high. So the limit here, we can call it, for the sake of argument, we can call it almost endless. So I hope you found this video helpful, everyone. I hope you enjoy making this game. Um, we've got more videos planning, being planned soon, so I hope you found this helpful. Um, thanks for watching, and goodbye.